Hey guys, welcome back. This video we're going to be talking about the character data type. It's really simple, very easy to get the hang of, so it's going to be fun. Let's just dive in and get started. But before we do that, I wanted to give a special shout out to Monday.com for sponsoring this series. Monday.com is a project management solution that is going to change the way you do work. With Monday.com, you can keep track of all the tasks you got going on. You can label them as in progress, complete, or blocker, whatever you want to do to keep organized. You can also share boards with key stakeholders. So if you need people to keep track of where a project stands, you can use Monday.com as basically a communication layer to share exactly where things are. This is great if you have management or a customer wanting to keep track of where a project stands. They can help point out where things are progressing as well as where things are blocked and we need to do a little bit of extra work. This is a great tool for teams and personal use, so check it out. I'll leave a link for you in the description. Give it a try, you won't be disappointed. Now back to characters. We create a character with the char data type and then we can give it a name and assign the value. Now we use single quotes here, we don't use double quotes. So in C Sharp, single quotes are reserved for characters, double quotes are reserved for strings, which is a sequence of characters. So what that means is if we tried to do something like this, letter two and set that equal to A with double quotes, well for one, we're getting an error here. What is that about? It says cannot implicitly convert type string to char. Basically, it looks like a character, but it's not. A character is always represented using single quotes. This here is actually a string literal with only one character in it. Slightly different, and it's a bit confusing at first if you don't really understand the differences in data types. But characters are always limited to just one individual letter, or space, or number, or whatever it is, and you have to use single quotes. So that's the rules. <laughs> So let's get rid of that. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about how characters are stored or represented in memory, you should understand the ASCII table. And basically what this is, is it's a table that will tell you how a number is stored. Now, the only thing I'm really concerned about here are the columns DEC for decimal and then char. So if we find a character on here, such as the lowercase a, which is right here, you guys can see right there. <laughs> you can see that in decimal, this is a 97. So what exactly does that mean? Well, what that means is that A, lowercase a, and 97 are stored the same way in binary. That means whether or not it's a 97 or an A is purely how we interpret that binary. So because we labeled this as a character, it's going to interpret it as an A. But we could just as easily represent it as a number. For example, I could go down here and create an integer variable and assign it the letter A, which seems weird because usually you can't just mix data types like that. But for characters and integers, they're interchangeable. It works perfectly fine. Now you should also know that there are some characters on here that aren't typical letters or numbers. So for example, all of the special characters are here. And then we also have some special characters here at the beginning. So we have a null character, some other junk. <laughs> Most of the stuff you don't really have to worry about, it's just useful to know that it exists. The way we represent some of these in C Sharp is a little bit different than typing out the character like so. For example, if we wanted to do a tab character, the way we would do that is we would use a backslash T, like so. When we use a backslash, we're telling C Sharp that we're going to have what's known as an escape character. An escape character is just a character that tells the computer that we want to interpret this a little bit differently. So when we put the slash, we're saying, hey, what's coming up next is not going to be interpreted as a lowercase t, but rather as a tab. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if we were to do console.write line, and inside of here we had a string, let's say, hello, and then we did a backslash t, and then put something else. When we run this, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a space between both these words. And you see we get hello, and then a giant space, which is a tab, and then Caleb. Overall, characters are pretty simple. I have a couple other things before we go. As you can see, we are converting a character to a number here. We can do it the other way around using an explicit cast. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if we went in here and put 97, we could, before this, put in parentheses char. And this is going to convert the 97 to a character. Now, the ASCII table is nice and useful to get started with, but it's actually a bit limited. That's because this only goes up to 127, and there is an extended version which goes up to 255. Characters in C-sharp can hold much more than that. For example, I can go in here and put 977, and then now let's output this and see what it is. 
So we put letter in there, do a .NET run, and you can see we get this pretty cool character here. So what in the world? Why, why is it that we can go beyond 255? Well, that's because characters in C Sharp are 16-bit, and the ASCII table is only 8-bit, which is why we only get up to 255. If you guys don't understand binary at this level, that's totally fine. Basically, an 8-bit number gives us 256 possibilities, which is 0 all the way up to 255, whereas a 16-bit gives us 65,536 possibilities. So there are a ton more possibilities with a 16-bit character. The 16-bit character version of this table is called Unicode. So here is a giant Unicode table. <laughs> if we go down and find 977, it looks like it's this one right here. Decimal 977. So we have all of these possible characters available to us with the 16-bit character. With Unicode, you can represent a lot of different languages, so it's more universal, it's more accepted, it's the better thing to use. So that is your introduction to characters. Pretty simple, but also kind of complex when you get all into this Unicode stuff. But overall, you just need to know that character is just single quotes with a letter inside. <laughs> That's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're gonna be diving into strings, which is gonna be a lot of fun. So check it out, guys. I'll see you then, and please be sure to subscribe.